Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Milk Lover, and thank you for joining me here this start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, our early access update, or look at the update, for 5.0 Ashes to Embers, in which we're now playing as the Duchy of Langenberg. We're led by Duchess Sophie, in which we'll talk about her in a little bit, but we've got to talk about who we are first, the last Duchy, Langenberg. Langenberg is the last standing duchy of the Kingdom of Manitoba, having survived attempts by both the Republicans and Electorals to relegate us to the history books, followed by the miracle on the border. The War of the Republican Coalition appeared, doomed from the start. Winnipeg's rebellion deprived the kingdom of its industrial heartland, forcing it to stretch its resources beyond breaking point once it met its Congress and the Electorals ended the conflict. Amidst the fighting, Langenberg appeared easy prey, and yet the duchy would, in the end, prove to be the burial ground. Also, as we're playing this early access update for Old World Blues 5.0, uh, i let you know that if you'd like to check out Old World Blues for yourself, it'll be the first link in the description below, and the update for everybody will be released on February 28th, 2024. But at the end of the road, Langenberg remains. The Duchy of Langenberg came to being over one and a half centuries ago, when her ancestors pledged their loyalty to the newly proclaimed King of Winnipeg, Gun I, with the Kingdom of Manitoba being proclaimed shortly thereafter. Our lands prospered, the royal borders stretching all the way from the shield wall to the old codet. Sadly, all good things come to an end sooner or later. Unable to brunt the inevitable march of time, the king, or the great unifier, eventually abdicated. The crown was passed on to the king's longtime friend, the Duke of Brandon, who over the course of his reign would succeed in unifying much of the south, today dubbed the Crownlands, over the generations. The once esteemed line grew ever more complacent and decadent, as did all those at the helm of the realm's duchies plunging the kingdom into chaos. All except us. Our ancestors stood true to our values, toiling the fields day and night, as the royal court drained the coffers in the name of the lavish dancers and never-ending banquets. In time, the cracks began to show. The first disaster came with the loss of the kingdom's southernmost territories, held by the Duchy of Warwick, to a bloody revolt that would eventually lead to the formation of the Methodist Congress. The second came, shortly thereafter with the secession of Winnipeg and their neighboring territories, which culminated with a devastating war of the Republican coalition. The Electoral seized on this crisis, annexing large portions of the Duchy of Absalon. While the bulk of the army was occupied down south, the remote Duchy of Angus was swiftly carved up by mercenaries and scoundrels, while the Duchy of Dauphin was forever crippled by a devastating surprise attack on its royal port during the tall end of the conflict, or tail end of the conflict. One after another, they fell. All by the time the dust settled, only a remnant other trades lived on through us. Warwick's mechanical skills. Ooh, we get robots. Absalom's tradesmanship. Interesting. Angers or Angers administration. Annexation costs during peace conferences. Offensive war. Penalty stability modifier. And Dolphin's naval mastery. Well, we don't really use naval stuff very much. We don't, this is, doesn't help us out too much. Mechanical know how. That doesn't help us out either, really. Production efficiency based on a bad tradesmanship. Uh, I guess we'll be tradesmen because we already are going down conventional warfare, which is okay, you know, land option. But it was already in here for us, so we're at the House of Azmathine, ruler. But we'll see what happens. So let's go with uh, royal etiquette. Well, we are royal. Um, we'll probably keep the royalty here, right? House of Yorkton. Um, you know what? We're royal. The Yorktons. The Yorktons have served Langenberg's ducal family faithfully since before the inception of the kingdom. They are, in all effect, the backbone of the duchy's court. Hailing from a long line of primarily educators and judges, the family's roles had evolved in recent years to ensure Langenberg's continued survival in the increasingly uncertain northern wastes, the Marshal's finest day. In the earliest morning of the second day of the War of the Republican Coalition, the Methodist leader Antoine Beausoleil marched on the outskirts of the city of Yorkton. Flanked by over 25,000 of the Congress's finest soldiers, on the Langenbergian side, unbeknownst to the enemy, stood Marshal Leif Yorkton. He was concealing an army less than half the size, one spawned by an uneasy alliance between the Duchy's military and exiles from Regina, who had taken up residence in Fort Capel. Assisting them was a coalition of the kingdom's most elite knights, uh, hailing from the or legendary orders of the Archangel, St. Peter, St. George, and Justice. <clears throat> The battle had begun with an artillery barrage targeting the city walls to Antoine's surprise. Fire was instantly returned from a nearby forest, obliterating his position. Despite the ensuing chaos among the Metis lines, Antoine was able to consolidate his ranks before the Longobogian troops could descend on them, ordering a hasty retreat. The move would prove disastrous, stinging into opening. The marshal launched into a horseback charge alongside a squad of knights. The subsequent pursuit would break the Metis lines for good, earning the duchy an unlikely victory. The marshal could not deem his victory absolute, though. Antoine had managed to secure, scurry away, and Yorkton's daring charge had claimed the lives of some of his most elite knights, including that of Tolga Weybron, Grand Master of the Order of Archangel. 
Nevertheless, a crucial battle had been won on that day, one that allowed the Marshal to march east and face the bulk of the Republican forces. Their sacrifice had not been in vain. Yorkton had saved the crown. Oh, that seems like we're going to go beat those people up then. And the state of the duchy. The yearly state of the duchy address is upon us, a chance for the duchess to give her subjects a glimpse of what is ahead. The Marshal is to receive the written statement by a royal courier ahead of the ceremony, as per tradition. I feel almost like Alex remember a little bit, a little bit just because he loves monarchies, but a lineage of steel, baptized in blood. Leif Yorkton's father, jo Joran, was the first of his house to serve as the Duchy's Marshal. He would leave this earth having established a reputation for fierce mental elasticity, thanks to the methodical and introspective approach to battlefield planning. His descendants were determined to live up to that legacy. Leif, uh, if I'm not saying wrong, Leif, Leif, sought to mitigate the drawbacks of his father's approach, combining Joran's knack for extensive pre-planning with a more personal approach to combat that emphasized the Marshal's role in the battlefield. Eleanor, Leif's daughter, and said saw untapped potential in her grandfather's baseline ideas. She argued the importance of even more long-term planning initiatives, such as intensified special training and the teaching of military history. In the end, most one of the most one of these per perspectives will come to influence the brass most. Euron's methodicalness, not bad. Leif's spontaneity. Eleanor's rigor. Um, the army experience game would help us out initially. The other command power, eventually, command power doesn't really matter too much. It does matter. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, but you're wrong. And then, uh, new investments. Reforming the bureaucracy. Yorkton's military reforms, which seems pretty good. Get 3% more population. Recruitable population, which is fantastic. I would like this, and I would also like this, more stability. So, we're reforming the bureaucracy. Well, Sophie's are a de facto ruler. The Duchy still employs a large and complex network of bureaucrats to run the day-to-day -day operations of the state in recent years. The number of crown servants has bloated far beyond manageable. Some targeted reforms are called for. Oh, this is 30 day focus. Langenberg into the future, huh? Langenberg into the future. You weren't really supposed to see this, were you? Uh, Yorkton was ironically born in Yorkton. Okay then. But he came to me on a cold night. The Lord awoke in the dead of night. A royal courier, donned in black, awaiting him at the front door. Yorkton felt his heart sink as the man handed him a letter marked with a ducal insignia. No words needed to be exchanged. Both knew the messenger had arrived too early in the week to be delivered in the state of the duchy. The man of the Lord left for the capital that very same night. The ride was quiet, neither wanted to dwell on the knowledge that she had taken her final breaths. After that, the marshal came to appreciate the solitude of night. <gasps> <coughs> Excuse me, but so much for reading about Duchess Sophie. There goes our stability. Leif Yorkton. Sword of the North. More war support. Better just by war goals times more. Better division and recovery rate. The Lord Yorkton is a man both clouded in mystery and legend, having gained his status from crushing the Mantis army during the War of the Republican Coalition. Again and again, he has walked him away from impossible battles leaving his enemy in the pages of our history books. Now the sword of the north draws again to turn back time and regain all which was lost. <coughs> Excuse me. Lots of coughing. Uh, that's my... Very nice. Well, after that... Oh, hello. Oh. Darn it. I wanted all that population. But that's okay. Actually, what do we have here? Quality of the kingdom. New air force. Ooh. With an inspiration from Winnipeg. Hmm. Where the devil lies, their date will come. For now, the story remains untold. Oh god, there's so much here. We have a lot to do, don't we? Duchy of Brandon. The Royal Road. Restored Megacity. This all began. Vehicle tech. Uh. Holy cow. Canadian dollars. Set victory points for Hudson Bay City, ruined at 20. Uh, we keep doing this one, we get 50 political power, so I want to keep doing it then. Well, okay. Time stops, and once again, it marches forward. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference. The Second Coalition. Oh. Eloy Steele, the Republic of the Three Rivers, wishes to finally end the long standing conflict between the King of Manitoba and the nations formerly under its control. To this end, they have called upon the peoples of Manitoba together to form a coalition to take down the King, having dubbed it the Second Coalition, in the spirit of the original war of the First Republican Coalition, who shall prevail as time. Oh. Interesting. Well, well then. Bloody electorals. They're all gonna kill themselves and each other. Dunder, manifest hope. Oh, hope is here. Oh. Interesting. Well, we got more political power. That's nice. Um, economic advisors. I don't. I want to get someone who. Oh. 50% special armor, or armor for special forces is very strong. 
Infantry Sobrek. Infantry equipment. Better production cost, but worse reliability. Professional drunkard. That should be me, Tobias. Well, Tobias' role as Duchess Sophie's old butler is only the latest in a long and illustrious career as a servant of the crown. Throughout the decade, the man works as a public administrator both within the Ducal and the Kingdom state apparatuses, fostering uh, <clears throat> a reputation across the land as a competent steward and jack of all trades. No matter the ministry or institution he is posted to, all breathe a sigh of relief whenever they see Tobias step through the front door. Oh, that's not bad. The Duchess is dead. Bells were toiling across the city as they arrived, for the people had been informed of the tragedy that had just befallen the duchy. The Lord dismounted as he approached the capital's boulevard before making his way to the ducal palace on foot. Sophie's little butler, Tobias, watched him emerge from a sea of mourners that had gathered at the foot of the gates. The Lord held his head high, though Tobias recognized it for the act that it clearly was. His eyes betrayed the knot that had formed in his throat. The crowd parted as he advanced, for some offering words of condolence to him as he passed by, for some, little more than a formality, for most a, carth a cathartic act of grievance. Tobias pulled open the palace gates, allowing Yorkton to squeeze through. They entered the immaculate halls and approached Sophie's resting place. The Lord's hand laid on his on the handle. Expecting his dismissal, the butler made to leave. Instead, Yorkton asked him to stay. Without turning to face him, he muttered, This is their fault, Tobias. It is because of them that she has left us, left me. Tobias remained silent, unsure of whom he spoke of. Yorkton's next words, however, revealed the subject of his venomous ire, that rotted corpse of a king, that corrupt nobles, the traitor's guise of Winnipeg. They weakened her, sapped her of all her strength and determination. On this, I swear they shall all pay. Tobias held his tongue, for the Lord spoke of treason against the crown itself. It was then that he entered her room, and paid his final heartfelt respect to the woman that had raised him as her own. There he remained to grieve until the sun's glow began to wane and the shadows cast long. Finally, as the Lord said his final goodbye, Tobias presented him with a duchess's will. The butler watched him as he read it, and the marshal's eyes widening and narrowing as he darted back and forth across the document. He turned to look at Tobias, and spoke in a tone as cold as the frigid lakes. Gather the ducal cabinet. There's much work to be done. At once, my lord. A regency under Leif Yorkton has been declared until Sophie's will has been settled. This will start a ticking timer for Yorkton's rebellion. When the timer runs out, we'll go to war with the kingdom of Manitoba. <clears throat> well, then. Interesting. So what are we missing here? We're missing a lot of stuff. We do have... As you think, though, which is pretty nice. I'll do that at least. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, then. A race against history, but only if he is prepared to sacrifice everything. Okay. And like I said, they're already going down that way, so we must keep going that way for now. A oh, basic melee weaponry. Heavy. Ooh, power. Oh, that's different. Spring for a crag. Advanced weaponry. Elite weaponry. Let's go basics. That's good. I like the day the army XP. An army with a state. What are we, Prussia? Maybe. Golden Gecko. The unique one here is Yorkton Arms as well. Yorkton Arms is the Lord's personal arms manufacturing company that has had the privilege of outfitting his elite soldiers for the last 20 years. By trusting them to help out and consult the entire state's arms production, we can ensure quality production second, second to none. That's actually Northern Route CEO. That's pretty good. It ain't much. It's very, very little for political power, but whatever. History awaits. My lord, the time has come. Exclaimed Tobias. We have to take make our move soon. There'll be no time to dwell until we see the conflict through. Say the word, and I'll have our riders sent out to rally the, our loyalists to your banner. Yorkton kept gazing out of the palace window, the heavy rain clattering against a thin layer of glass. How many will answer the call? Tobias replied, individually, my lord, few, but with enough work, a worthy coalition can be mustered. The butler pulled out a notepad before adjusting his spectacles. As you will recall, most veteran knights were posted across the duchy following their disbandment of the orders. The memory of your deeds live on in their hearts. I doubt many will hesitate to rally at your side. The same is true for regulars. Tobias glanced over to the marshal. Alone, they'll hardly do. The Fort Cap held enforcers, the exiles, the remnants of House of the House Dalfin in the north. I'm afraid some level of compromise is called for. Yorkton remained quiet for a time, digging in the man's words. Do you think we can stand a chance, Tobias? The royal butler immediately caught onto the slight quiver in the marshal's voice. Are you afraid of failing, Sophie, my lord? The marshal finally turned, a newfound look of steel determination washing across his face. Get my coat. We're moving out. Excellent, my lord. The knights plot. Ooh. Two units of the Order of Archangel will be raised and given to our command. Minor reforms, citizen militias, new military reforms, three units of infantry, relocating the guns and equipment versus expanding the Yorkton armory. Ooh, that's, that's some free factories. We can always make more stuff later on. Uh, the Knights Plot. I like military reforms, but we're going to grab uh, these guys first. The Knights Plot. To the Knights, this way is a day long awaited. By Yorkton's orders and Alicander Weyburn's hands, the banishment of the Knights' decree shall be rendered void in Langenburg. The veteran warriors and their descendants are already flocking to the capital, eager to fight alongside the Lord once more. And uh, Yorkton's old loyalists. At its prime, the Order of Arch the Archangel was a truly terrifying force. At 
any one night was capable of cutting down an entire squad of men all on their lonesome. Clad head to toe in the Night Kingdom's finest armor, uh, their mere presence on the battlefield was capable of swinging the tides of battle on morale alone. With many of these same men uh, under our command once more, we stand ready to claim the days of glory. If last will and testament is not completed, this will have serious consequences for our ability to wage war during the rebellion and make us seem illegitimate in the eyes of the world. For Capel, within the Duchy of Longenburg, there remained one more major faction within the, with the power to stack the odds in the Marshal's favor. The exiles of Fort Capel. Originally acting as, acting as enforcers for the House of Warwick in the city of Regina, they were displaced following the Metis uprising that brought an end to the family's rule over the southern duchy. In the decades that followed, they kept a largely low profile, living out quiet lives in the western outskirts of the Duchy of Langenburg, keeping watch over everyday low lives and renegades. That was until the War of the First Republican Coalition, when Yorkton had to practically negotiate with the exiles leaders to dissuade them from undertaking a revenge tour across the lands of the Metis Congress after the marshal drove them back over the border on that day. Their lingering hatred for the insurgents was made plain for all to see, as did the extensive stockpile of weapons they had retained since their initial escape. Interestingly, neither Sophie nor Gunn II ever moved to a requisition of their weaponry, perhaps believing that the exiles' zealousness could eventually be put to good use, and it would appear that the day had come at last. They say it best to let sleeping dogs lie, but this one had many things, unlike any Yorkton had seen before. Promising an eventual march into Regina should be an alluring enough pr proposition for the marshal to secure the support of the exiles for what was to come. But what then? Once unleashed onto the city, Yorkton would struggle to prevent them from unleashing vengeance onto every man, woman, and child, with any ties or loyalties to the Metis Congress. That would seem a clear message, no doubt, but is this the kind of bloody president the Marshal wanted? To set for his new realm. I would not bargain my soul for a few extra pairs of hands. More dynamite. A little more manpower. Colonel Reynolds and Daniels becomes advisors. It'll cost what it'll cost. Hmm. Do I see anything here? Well, I want to pick the unit leaders. Hmm. I just want to see if we, if we get locked out of anything here. I don't want to get locked out of anything. Oh, abdicate. Oh, new age for Manitoba. Well, okay. Um, honestly, it'll cost what it'll cost, which is I like. But we get people here, so I want to get the people, right? Is that does it make sense? Yeah, Reynolds and Colonel Daniels. Cool. <clears throat> Let me get the knights passed. And the old loyalists as well, please. Um, I like the manpower. Five units militias are okay, but this is better. New military reforms. We cannot cut corners when it comes to readying our troops for what is ahead. The more rigorous training exercise will be time-consuming, no doubt, but they could be spelled the difference between victory and annihilation. Oh, that's 30 This is 60 days. Oh, good God. They turn to the exiles. It was informed uh, that they would be waiting in the courtyard. Uh, Yorkton expected a dozen. Uh, a couple dozen, perhaps, if he was lucky, but when he emerged out of the Ducal Palace, Langenburg's proud coat of arms could be seen stretching on beyond the gates. They all heeded his call, remnants of the disbanded knight's order, up and comers cast out by jealous and insecure brass, unsavory types who were not afraid to bend the rules to get results. The elders of the group stepped forth, not one man recoiled when the herald came to us. We are yours to command. You are to place the sand on his shoulder, and standing with me today you have just secured a better tomorrow. Let us fight to our last breath to assure it is not squandered. Yes, my lord. Hey, that's cool. So you guys are what? 16 combat width with recon support and anti-tank, and the exiles are 20 combat width with at least recon support. Let's see, exiles. 20. Yeah, that's better. That's way better. Oh god, they got a pretty thick army, don't they? That's not ideal, though. Wolf. <laughs> the Archangel returns. Oh, leading the search for the knights within the exiles, Alcander Weyburn, son of the fallen Grand Master of the Order of the Archangel. The young man's presence was instrumental in convincing some of the more despondent veterans out in the far-flung reaches of the north to make the return. Many agreed on one condition. The Alicander took up his father's mantle and officially restore the order following its dismemberment at the hands of the cowardly Manitoban nobles. And so, in a day filled with pomp and ceremonies, Alicander uh, raised a sacred standard last seen trampled at the Battle of Yorkton. There, in the Ducal Chapel, he gave the pledge of the Archangel before the order's remnants, solemnly offering his heart for the people of Manitoba. He would protect the rightful king until the day God took him from this earth. Be it from enemies or with, for without or within. Like father, like son. Ooh. Special forces, immediate special forces tech. Add nightly prowess. Ooh. The ducal deal. Or duchess deal. 
Over the course of several weeks, York often traveled from settlement to settlement across the lands in hopes of mustering support from some of the minor counts and title holders within the Duchy of Langenburg. It saved the most troublesome for last, Duchess Baloris, of the fallen house of Dauphin. The titular title, or settlement, was once a source of Manitoba's naval prowess, boasting a large old world port connecting to the greater Winnipeg, Winnipeg through a narrow river strait that doubled as a bottleneck to any hostile powers looking to retaliate against the city. During the course of War of the First Republican Coalition, Hubris got the best of Belarus' father, who failed to recognize the trap he was being lured into by the insurgents. In one fell swoop, the kingdom was lost the vast majority of its navy, leaving the port of Dauphin vulnerable to a devastating attack which crippled Manitoba's hold over the waters and cost the duke his life. The chaotic struggle uh, for inheritance that followed left Duchess Belarus landless, forcing her and a small cabal of loyalists into exile within the lands of Longenburg. As they took in a gratitude for Sophie's magnanimity, the fallen nobles spent every moon since fighting back against a monstrous horse spilling across the duchy's northern frontiers from the neighboring Blighted Woods. The good duchess came with a lot of baggage, Yorkton thought to himself, as he considered requesting her support ahead of what was to come. Her men had been struck, uh, been through hell and back, no doubt. They would prove a formidable asset. The prospect of restoring ownership of House Dolphin to the rightful heir should be enough to motivation for the Duchess to offer her, her heart for the time being. But once the dust had settled, what else could such a powerful ally hold over his head? Because someone whose life had offered them not but pain and strife be trusted to act in good faith. Yorkton continued to ponder his dilemma as he separated out Cantor, who marched through his chamber minutes later. You called, my lord? The marshal turned to his right-hand man. Be ready to travel, Don. I have a proposition for Duchess of Belores. Must have gotten my wires crossed. Carry on, Alcantor. We're getting the gang all together. Now, if this is good or bad, I have no idea, but we'll see. Yeah, new military reforms. We cannot cut corners when it comes to rating our troops for what is ahead. More, the more rigorous training exercise will be time consuming, no doubt, but they can spell the difference between victory and annihilation. So we're going to get rid of that and start really getting more guns. Reclamation Authority, very nice. Uh, how much How much money do we have? 15, that's not very much. We do need more weaponry, though. Hmm. The Marshal's men. Several retired veterans have made their way to the capital in recent months to pay their respect to the late Duchess. It don't take much convincing for the most to say. Now, as much as great as militia is, which it isn't, um, if you get, like, XL, XLs from the kingdom, that's very strong compared to a single militia division. But the return of the cousin. What do you mean you let him through, I said. An all too familiar, familiar voice bellowed out from behind the Marshal. Hey, Leafy. Yorkton let out a deep sigh, summoning every ounce of patience left in him. As he turned, he was met with a pearly white smile and fiery locks of his cousin. Hello, Eric. It's been some time. Eric sat in front of the marshal's desk, kicking his heels over the surface. Tell me about it. Leaf sighed. Done bleeding the inks dry already. Eric placed his hands over his chest, playfully frowning. Hey, all I have to offer my services. If the customer decides they aren't in the right fit, that's on them. Leaf sat back at his desk, massaging his temples. What do you want, Eric? Also, could you please put your feet down? I just had this brought in. Um, the cousin complied, leaning, leaning closer to the marshal. Look, long story short, I need a new gig. They're uh, not exactly welcoming back east no more, and I hear that you're making some big moves. Eric went, winked. Leaf, uh, life, life, leaf. Lean back in the seat. Right. <clears throat> As the marshal began compiling a list of excuses to send his troublesome cousin on his way, he stopped to reflect. At the height of its power, the kingdom of Manitoba kissed the banks of just about every major river in the region. Trade was, as a result, one of the largest assets. Those days had come and gone, but maybe, just maybe, he could make be the man who could capture his lost legacy down the line. And once that was accomplished, he would need people who could manage the buying and selling of goods up and down those treacherous waters. Eric might have been a swindler on the side, but his experience in the field was undeniable. Marshal groaned. I might have something for you in the future, but you're going to have to be patient for the time being. Eric bolted up. Yes, never doubted that I could count on you, my cousin. I knew those town guys down at the pub were full of it. With that, he turned around and made his way out of the marshal's office, lightly whistling to himself. Wait, did, what did they say about me? The we got an economical advisor? Or is it economic advisor? Hey, we're regards. Nice. Also, we're going to buy guns. We need guns. Yay, I love guns. Stability. Honestly, I want to get uh, military theorists, too. Look at that. Oh, it's a militia. God dang it. Well, it's not even good militia. Ugh. Now, what are we here? Small professional army. Ooh, that's, that's different. Ooh. Daily command power gain. The king's army. So you lose mobilization speed, army org organization rate, command, daily command power, and cold acclimatization factor. You lose, wow, the royal knight's order. You lose 20% political power. Holy cow. Get more special forces attack, though. And capacity multiplier. Oh, but the imperial army's not too bad. It's weird that... In order, you get more, but not everything's terrible. Even this was not bad. The Frozen Thrones Guardians. 15%. Oh, that's 15. That's, this is 20. Division attack goes up. More organization. And daily command power gain. Oh, the Path of Modernity. The Legends Never End. Huh. Interesting. Um, so as much as I want to do this one next, and I want those infantry units, we're gonna, we need those arms workshops now so we can start producing even more. Because, well, we're going to need more stuff anyways. 
Oh, Royal Knights. 10 combos with two support companies. Okay. Because right now that would make us eight divisions. I want at least one division to hold, hold each tile, so which we, we should have. Doesn't mean we'll be strong enough to hold everything here, but still. How many more days have we got left? 218, that's not bad. Alright, well then we're going to throw... Um, anyone with special forces here? I don't think so. I'm going to go with you because you have experience gain. Give him inspiration to learn as much as you possibly can. And... A sniper, like special forces. We do have a river here we have to hold, so... Um, but yeah. Expand the Yorkton Armory. During the War of, Repu of the Republican Coalition, the Yorkton's Army established itself as the Duchy's primary arms producer supplier. And under the Long and Bugs' limited manpower, still if he failed to see much point in expanding his manufacturing capabilities following the conflict. With the dark clouds accumulating on the horizon, this will need to change. So we've got 60 days left, and then we'll do this one, and then we'll do this one, the Marshals of Men. Several retired veterans have made their way to the capital in recent months to repay their respect to the late Duchess. It did not take much convincing for most to say. The unknown, unbeknown benefactor, unknown benefactor. Yorkton swung open the doors of the palace armory, the smell of the gunpowder and cold steel immediately invading his senses. On its side were a handful of guards, dragging in the last of the crates from outside. One of them sprinted over to the marshal. Please, my lord, we have not had the opportunity to fully inspect the chimney yet, and Yorkton dismissed him, approaching the dozen or so containers that had been dragged to the back of the room. He grabbed some nearby crowbar and cranked open one of the sealed crates. Rifles and ammunition boxes. Just like all the rest, nothing exactly flashy or state of the art, but sturdy, efficient, and most importantly, easy for anyone to wield. One of the patrols upon the crates scattered in front of the palace gates in the dead of the night. The marshal's mysterious benefactor using the cover of the blizzard to go uh, by undetected. Whoever they may be, may they must sit within the marshal's inner circle. Someone aware of Yorkton's plans for the duchy. Uh, whatever the case, uh, the sword of the north was not about to let this investment go to waste. I wonder if they'll come knocking once it's all over. Hey, look at that. That's fantastic, because I'd like to convert these guys over. Let's see, Kingdom X, uh, so, uh, I think we do want them. Because so, when we convert them over, they'll use a lot of that equipment that we just got. Day of Infamy, I've read this before, so if you know about the Day of Infamy, this go ahead, and then we get political power from it. We're going to be very Canadian here. Canadian, Canadian, not Canadian, 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 but Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. There you go, yeah. Hey, look at that. Very nice. Cause they do have militia too, and their armies. They have, they have dogs? Is that doggos? I can't tell. Hmm. As much as getting cities is great, you know, it is what it is. Band tribute? No, we're good. And then, yes, new military reforms would be de decent. Very nice. Marshall's men. Cool. And so we can't do that one. Eventually do the Marshall's industrial backbone. For us to come out of Victoria's in the prolonged war will require an industry to revival, rival that of the kingdom. Time is of the essence. I shall have to call on some favors with the Earl of Grey. So is that, is that where we get tea from? Earl Grey tea? I have no idea. Sounds kind of interesting though. Hey, that one's doing good. And that's one will give us actually some more decent buffs. And last will and testament. The guns have been mustered, the knights have been readied, and the men have been riled. But before we can march into Brandon, hearts and minds alike would have to be won. Now, so these are all for uh, the war, huh? Eleanor was transferred from the King of Manitoba to us as an advisor, the court that the count that became king. Interesting. We're visiting our doctrine, that'd be good to do, to do as well. A wartime recruitment would be very nice too. Five whole acres to any able bodied man willing to serve until dismissal. Hardly a better deal than that in the periphery. Per periphery. Periphery, my bad, I can't read. Then again, when could I read? You never know. Joy returns to Grey Stables. At long last, Joy's been returned safe and sound her family in Grey Stables. <clears throat> Though the odds in the wasteland never so often go in one's favor, everyone's thankful to hear the good news. With people throwing themselves forward to offer protection, John Lockhart and Amy Lee Sundell could at least rest easy knowing that no one could ever hurt Joy ever again. There's kinship and hardship. And so, Freedom's Army. Who's Freedom's Army? Oh, gee, that makes sense, yeah. I gotta play as mutants. I really need to play as mutants. 
muties. So right now we got 420 for manpower. We're blazing it here. Um, we're doing the Marshall's Industrial Backbone, and we're just getting ready. I didn't realize, which I'm glad I did realize eventually, that uh, there's a little waterway here too. So the main goal is to hold. Hold, 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 hold for as best we can, for as long as we can. We'll see what happens though. And we've got the last one, Testament. <clears throat> because right now we are going to war. Oh god. They are attacking us. Ooh, you're not quite down there yet. Two divisions are getting attacked here. It's not ideal. Can you hold out? That is the real question. Look at us, Canadians. Look at us. We're like Mounties, I think. I don't know. I don't know my Canadian uniforms very well, but whatever. Uh, we're winning so far. I like it. Winning is nice. Yes. We're doing alright. As long as we're just fighting the Kingdom of Manitoba. Anyone else in? No, that's not good. Not good for us. But other than that, we'll, we'll do okay. Get some more manpower just in case. If we have to. Want to open offices? Thank you very much. Head on over there. Yes, please. Now these guys are all the same division in which they're twenty combo with, with support recon and anti tank. So it should be okay overall. But we will see. Let them do that there. I might take this guy away and actually add him back to the main line. We'll see. But last one testament, shall we? Mm, we do could use we could use a little more defense because we're not doing so well right here. We're not doing so hot. Uh, do we have more upgrades for these guys? Yes, we do. Inspirational. Um, yeah, that would help. That should immediately help, if anything, actually. What do we want here? Military. We got actually a lot of awesome things here. A lot, a lot of great stuff. Soft attack and defense. Infantry armor. Soft attack and defense. Um, special forces equipment, which I do want to do. Division organization, recovery rate, and supply of distance. Plus 30% more recon, which is different. Plus 50% more initiative. Um, a former member of the Knight's Order. A good plan ever survives first contact. Joshua was always the first one in. And the last one out, specializing in reconnaissance and covert operations. After the organization was disbanded, he roared, roamed the North as a mercenary, offering up his skills to even the most unsavory of clients for the sake of making a quick buck. But rumor is that if trouble is brewing in Manitoba, then he is not one to pass up an opportunity. There are many more tricks up for this old dog to learn, but a few he could certainly teach. More initiative, land out attack, recon. That helps everybody. So, I kind of want to do that one. Next. Earl Grey Company. Always got a lot to Ooh, this is different. Eric Yorkton, River League Merchant. Better consumer goods, worse resources to market though. Better trading company, economy law cost goes down. Northern Rock CEO, Armor Smith. I do want to do Armor Smith though. 58 versus 300, some. Interesting, interesting. How many divisions do they actually have? That's a good question to ask. Let's get some more army XP first. Um, 23. Oh my god. That's quite a few guys. We are trying to make at least two more divisions now. I hope another one pooped out soon. You two go this way. I'll go here. Beep. So what's after the last will and testament? Yeah, we're going to do wartime recruitment, yeah. And then... Uh, manpower? I like the Manpower one, the W Campaign. Press releases, screw recruitment posters, and an occasional parade that internally dubbed W Campaign has proven a smashing success thus far. The people wander their towns asking themselves about the conflict. We'll be sure to get them before anyone else does. Last will and testament. Lord Yorkton emerged under the balcony of the Ducal Palace and overlooking the solemn cobblestone front yard and the curious masses of the capital. City officials had summoned them to the palace gates for reasons undisclosed. He leaned into the microphone placed on the podium before him. Loyal subjects of the Royal Duchy, I thank you all for coming. As you may be aware, I've been presiding over the lands of Longenburg as regent since the passing of her grace. He paused for a moment, letting the fond memories of the Duchess's reign wash over the masses. During this time, I've seen it to carrying out the measures listed in her will. You have, you may have seen an influx of land surveyors throughout your neighborhoods, as well as more frequent armed patrols roaming this capital. But the reason I have brought you here today uh, is to announce her final request. He paused again. This is it. Her grace has entrusted me, Leif Yorkton, with the rule of the realm. Members and chatter fill the yard. As most of you will be aware, the Duchess had no direct descendants. It would have been easy for her to allow the realm to fall into the hands of the king, as custom would dictate in these circumstances. He raised his finger in the air, but her grace recognized the danger facing the duchy. She recognized the decadence and contempt and infighting that had brought ruin to the kingdom. She knew that the realm could not prosper under hollow king. He paused, letting his vitriol settle into the crowd. Even in death, she seeks to protect you, and has trusted me to carry out that most noble of goals, and as I have done on several months, moons ago, I'll strive to succeed in that endeavor once more. He stopped. Seconds went by intermittently. As soon as his heart had stopped, it started to sink. From the back of the crowds, a faint chant reached him. Ton, then loud, louder. York, Lord Yorkton, then louder still. 
Lord Yorkton. Until the yard up until a unified crowd of Lord Yorkton, Lord Yorkton, Lord Yorkton. He raised his arms for the crowd, whether it was the Duchess's legacy or his own track record on the battlefield, that he had done it. The death was cast. Uh, within days, the world would reach Bren. Within days, the powers that would be mustered the forces to crush this new threat to their bloodline. And within days, he would cross the, the Asiniboine to put a stop to them. Printing, print the will, print out the will, and spread it to the neighboring settlements. This is getting a little more concerning here, isn't it? Because you're not allowed to leave, you can leave this direction and head back this way. Because you can use more organization. And we could probably use field hospitals too. Also take over Petro Chico. Uh, are we missing guns? Yeah, we are always missing guns. We have 18 Canadian dollars, so we're gonna buy more guns. Are they great guns? No, god no, of course not. But they help out. And that's like the most important thing. Honestly, let's do this. Boop. Follow the National Guard in Oklahoma. And what are we doing down here? We're still hanging out? Nice. Eric is doing a lot. He's got a lot of jobs. 900 versus 118, that's pretty good. So that's why I was concerned about manpower up here as well. Field fortifications. Oh, more entrenchment and organization. Yes, please. The W campaign. Good. Revisiting our doctrine would be good too, but we're going to do this one for more divisions first. Ah, there's that manpower. Anything else here? Mysterious Stranger. You're doing infantry. Recovery rate would be good. Um, reconnaissance. We do have recon on our guys already. You know what? We'll get more recon and then we'll get more of the other one later too. Should always have good recon. Intel advantage always. Which makes sense for what we want here. Also, we do have this. The Order of the Archangel has been restored. The Order of St. George, the Order of St. George, is currently braving the horrors of the electorates. Nathaniel Wa Nathaniel's watchman and brother Jan's crusade is still being waged in Dakota. Last crusade, the fire rage is on. We've got to take up the electors. Oh, that's ahead of time. Um, I'll do that one instead. We're good on resources. Cool. Seed selection is very good as well. Grab that one too. Call on favors with the arms manufacturers. We still have on to close tabs with some of the black market's largest arms dealers. It's about time we paid them a visit. And then we'll be revising the doctrine along the way too. <clears throat> it don't take long for the veterans to shake out the rust. Mere weeks into the campaign, they're already coming to me, eager to share some of their insights. Now five divisions of these guys, huh? You know, I kind of like it what they're doing right now, so don't even throw them in. If anything, you know what? Make them Lang Langenbergian footmen. Have them train. Hmm. Who do we want next? Oh, we want this guy. Leif Yorkton. 50% more attack is kind of insane to think about. They're still attacking us, which is fantastic. Okay, come here. Let them really just kind of uh, encourage them to come in. The followers of the apocalypse, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let them come in. It's fine. Encoded signal is nice. Because if not, um, you know what? I'll say half of you combine yourselves. Yep, no, 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 no. Reynolds, yes. Uh, no, we can't really do that right now, so we're a little busy. Learn infantry. They're still attacking, which is nice. But that frees up these divisions. This way we can attack it there too. Wow, they really kill themselves, don't they? I love it. Uh huh. Unless there's somewhere over here we can attack instead. There's a pretty much a river flowing through the entire border, so we gotta be careful. Oh, you're already over there. That's very nice. How much more manpower do they have? Gun the second, huh? Looks like they got plenty of manpower. Melee weaponry, that'd be nice and all, but. Not for us right now. 
Alright, so they're not doing anything, so let's go in. Let's see, oh, let's attempt to go in. <clears throat> it looks like our attempt has been very successful. Winnipegosis. Very nice. Great stampede. Grenade assault, good. I like that we started with one. Oh, these are already done. This is nice. One of these doctrines already there, ready to go. Uh, there. That's a good little defense right there too. Six divisions. Oh, uh, that's way too many. You all do that. You do that, and then you'll do this too. There you go. Honestly, it looks like they're banning the line, so let them stay there. I want you two to get to there. Go here to there. Looking pretty good so far. Chief of the Navy, Eliza born to fly. Ah, why not? Whoever said the sky's the limit. Eliza first got her wings in Eagle Rock, working as a courier mechanic for the hub's northern division. One critical engine malfunctioned and crash landing later. She found refuge in Sophie's court. The matriarch looking to keep the young woman close, should her talents ever prove of interest to the duchy. Stranded in another flightless society. Eliza's kept herself busy with odd jobs throughout Langenberg, spending her free time gazing at the clouds above and dreaming of one day piercing through to the clear blue skies beyond. Because we do want to make those eventually too. So. I'll just go here then. Come on. Vamos. Hey, we have to go to industrial division. Hey, we circled another one too. That's not fantastic. Keep the pressure up on them. They really left that one open, which is not great, but whatever. We get down here. Can we at least break over the river? Then we can send those guys that direction too, because they're starting to invade it as well. Good. Nice. No, we're doing well pretty pretty much across the entire front at this point. God dang, they're moving fast. Good, another division destroyed. Love it. This is pretty strong overall. I love the knights. They are sprinting through there too, which is not ideal, but whatever. Keep it up, keep them busy at the very least. I still have 17 divisions left. We have more, but still. Good. Duchess Beloris. One day we shall be welcome back as heroes, despite the difficult life she has lived. Duchess Beloris continues to hold to hope that a bright future is ahead for both herself and her house. In, the, in her heart of hearts, she has convinced all these experiences will one day enable her to restore her home and the royal poor within her to their former glory. Until then, she dutifully serves the Duchess of Langenberg as a shield against her enemies, be they at land or sea. Ah, oh, screw it, why not? Bacos? Sure, why not? For tactic, nope. All right, that's fine. They're not spread out here too much more, but it won't really matter once we cut these guys completely off. Rejevic, are we nicely? Good. Get here. Get here. Oh darn it. Okay, whatever. Go there. Good. You cut them off. Good. 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 This is actually a really fun nation play. I, I saw Langenberg. I'm like Langenberg. That doesn't sound like fun, but it was much fun as some of the other nations we could try. But it actually turned out to be very, a lot of fun. This is actually really awesome. The devs always have done a good job with Old World Blues. Always, 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 always. Very interesting things you can do. Interesting nations to play as. Fantastic. Oh, we got him! And we got a little navy! Look at that. Now we gotta deal with these guys too, probably. Or even the Republicans over there, too. Hmm. We'll see. Nice. 
Well, the count that became king. The settlement's been encircled, the capital's betterments, uh, battlements have been fallen, and the last of the king's men have been laid down in their arms. It's time to reap the rewards. Eleven lords transferred from the kingdom of Manitoba to us as an advisor. Fantastic. The Northern Congress has called. Following the recent breakdown in relations between the Metis Congress and the Three Rivers Republic, the Metis Congress has decided to explore the foreign relations independent of that of their former ally. While this announcement uh, uh, announced change in course will lead to more peaceful or increase in bloodshed for the far north, that is yet to be seen. But one thing is for certain, a regional power such as the Congress will surely shake things up in the political scene of Canada. Perhaps now is the time to strike. Oh, I completely agree. The Royal Knights, they're only 10 count with two. Means they could be better, but still. Oh. Hey, perf literally perfect. I'm ready to go to war with them again. I want to go to war. War, 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 more war. Uh, do we need more guns? No, actually, we're okay on guns. We'll close out of this one for now. I do want to get more stability, though. Training appointments. Some technology. Oh, the Arborg markets. Arborg seems to have figured out that the revolt is a good opportunity to sell equipment. While I've received an invitation to buy equipment that Arborg should be rightfully pledging to us, these opportunists probably sent an invitation to our, our enemies, too. Manpower reserved for the market. Manpower hired by us. Weapons up for sale. Special forces equipment up for sale. Army experience offered. Training specials available. Recruit mercs from the market. Then recruit 100 soldiers from the market, removing them from the market. Trade guns for mercenaries. Send 150 equipment to Arborg Junta. And get manpower out of it. Well, that's actually really awesome. The, long day, the day long awaited. Um, there you go. Okay, they're doing that too. Uh, you don't need this. Uh, Lord Yorkton has swung open the immaculate wooden doors of the kingdom's throne room, slowly taking in the sights of the decadent royal halls memories of his youth came flooding in. It was here where the rightful king had first issued him, with the monumental task of defending the land from the insurrectionists gnawing at the realm from all directions. And it was here where a cabal of cowardly aristocrats plowed to take what he had rightfully earned in the field of battle from under him. Ever since the takeover of the Rance had gone the second, the kingdom had faced a decline, but it seemed as though the Rada had done nothing to steal the splendor of these halls. As reminiscing was interrupted by an unexpected sight, the crown of the kingdom was enchanting as the walls had contained it. This guarded on the cold floors. The time it could not have worked out better, as the elite detachment of knights accompanying the marshal entered the hall and following their external sweep. The first thing they laid eyes on was a man raising the most important jewel of the, crown, of the land over his head. The soldiers dropped to one knee in reverence, but before the captain could utter a word, Lord Yorkton was quick to set his priorities straight. Launch a search of the palace and its surroundings for gun and his oak. I want them before me before the coming days. Then he turned to the knights, second in command, you. Issue a message to the platoon leader stationed across the major settlements. Tell them to inform the local council that I shall be in touch with as soon as to discuss, if possible, remote, upcoming administrative adjustments. With that, the knights quickly got back on their feet uh, and scrambled out of the hall. Lord Yorkton began facing around the room. He had just bought himself some time. There was only one matter left to resolve before he could consolidate his rule, cutting off the head of the snake. That long-awaited throne was finally his. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. We get the royal accord. Oh, look at that. We change. Uh, well equipped army, consumer goods. Ooh, uh, ooh, yes, please. Well, thus taking up the administration of the kingdom, we'll also have to reconnect the economic system of Langenburg and the Crownlands. While well, this will cause some hiccups, it will finally allow us to normalize our economy, reorganize the Manitoban, Manitobian army, King's army mobilization speed, better recruitable population, organization army regain, remove the Langenburgian army. Oh, interesting. With the integration of the kingdom's armies across, the Langenburgian army system has more or less fallen apart. What also allows us to mobilize a larger armed forces, that also means that we will no longer enjoy the benefits of our former professionalism. War is never cheap, but when the wages when waged among states, the victor can expect to make up at least some of the losses. Not so much a case for internal scuffles, only for over the next few months, we'll have to engage in extensive reconstruction effort, lest people begin yearning for the old regime. Interesting. Buy weapons from the market. Buy lots of weapons from the market. Buy spec ops equipment from the market. Buy experience from the market. Oh, that's cool. Hire a training specialist. Training specials from the market, removing them from the market. For 30 days, though. Offer guns for training specialists. So send guns, and for 30 days we get more stuff. I don't mind spending 50 to get stuff, or at least sending infantry equipment to get more manpower. That's actually really awesome. Arborg, that's, di that's different. And we own too, yeah. So instead of doing organization relations, this is more interesting. Brandon has this stuff here, too. Awesome. Yay. Nice. So now our income is 45 Canadian dollars per month. That's fantastic. This is awesome. Holy cow. And of course we're purple because it's a royal purple. 
Kingdom of Manitoba. That's just so great. Love it. This is turning into an awesome campaign. Fate of the Old Monarchy. The clock strikes midnight for the aristocrats and the corpse king. Soon the record shall be set straight, and every debt will be repaid in kind, and reorganized in the Manitobian army. In an effort to rebuild the kingdom, shatter army as quickly as possible, I have elected to offer pardons to all military personnel outside the top brass, willing to remain enlisted. Very few have opted for the gold for the sake of the rotten nobility. That would be good to do next. Yes, please. And yay! The junta is looking pretty thick. Wouldn't mind playing some too, probably. Hey, doggos, to a leafy octon we love. Leaf, we are familiar with the tales from out east. Migrants and pilgrims alike have told us a great many of your tales of legend and trials. You have faiths. Our lives have not been so easy to us, have they? The wasteland can be such a cruel place. <clears throat> While well, we place your faith, our faith in the kingdoms, peoples to resolve its issues, that does include your appeal. Uh, so we sent you a shipment of infantry equipment. May your knights return soon within strength, friend. With love, John Lockhart and Amy Lee Sundell. I need doggos too. I want doggos, maybe. Maybe we'll see you. We want doggos. We don't need a lot of this though. For once, something's about right. Oh, 500 infantry equipment. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, to do this, we need to complete focus on the colonies beyond the shield wall. Uh, as a board of any member of the royal accord, and restore these guys has we need to control Stoon. Prospectors from the damned. Oh, Freedom's army. Who are the damned? Are you guys up here? Blighted woods. Iron Confederacy. Uh, the den. When there's old believers. Dr. Rivers, the Junta. Uh. Oh, we have an international market too, don't we? Huh. Uh. Is it damned or the damned? It's probably the damned. <clears throat> well, okay then. Capture the war and whatever. Ooh. Yeah, I want more stability. I guess more manpower. We can buy more infantry equipment. Special force equipment, too. We need more motorized vehicles. Are we even making any motorized vehicles? No? Okay. Sounds about right. It's fine. A new age for the kingdom. Eleanor Yorkton becomes a unit leader. And 150 political power, holy cow. The day has come. Yorkton quickly restrained his back into his throne as a procession of knights and palace guards marched into the halls of the tribunal, both judge and jury. Seated to the left and across from the hall from him respectively, turned to watch as armed men shoved King Gun II and Queen Catherine into the center of the room, a bright spotlight casting down from above their heads. The knights had found themselves held in a corner of a set, hidden set of chambers, the man's visage buried deep in the weeping queen's arms. It had been days, yet Lord Lork Yorkton still could spot the trails of expensive eyeliner encrusted under the woman's cheeks. His eyes darted over to the fallen king, his visage hollow and unmoving. Was this all he had pictured himself triumphing over the years? A husk of a man on the verge of clinical insanity and his prolific spouse? The trial carried on for hours. The judge painstakingly listing out each and every one of the administrative's failures, abuses of power and reckless warmongering that had taken place under Gunn's stewardship. As the day carried on, Yorkton's daughter Eleanor, who stood at his side alongside the king's personal guard regiment, appeared increasingly restless. As the trial began drawing to a close, she inched closer, softly tugging at his sleeve. Father, a word? Yorkton glanced over to the judge, lightly raising his hand, who in turn bellowed out, The jury will withdraw to deliberate. Eleanor led Yorkton to a side room, shutting the door behind him. Father, I understand why you may feel that letting the king live is a risk too great, but... She looked down at the floor. Perhaps, please spare the Queen Catherine, even as consort. She's always done well by the people. I have witnessed it. She does not deserve what is coming to gun. Yorkton corked an eyebrow. Oh, a few months in this uh, court, and you already start making friends? And besides, it is for the jury to decide. Eleanor snapped back. The jury you picked? I recall playing knights with half the people in that tribune when I was a child. Yorkton opened his mouth in a protest, but was cut off. Please, just lock her away if you have to. This is less bloodshed. It's unnecessary. She moved closer to him. Father, what kind of leader do you dream of becoming? She looked away de dejectedly. The sword of the north I grew up hearing stories of would have known. You my word, no harm will come her way. Your dejections have been noted. Well, because eventually we got to figure out what do we want to do. Legend never dies. Let's take up the mantle of the largest empire which has ever existed versus a new age for Manitoba with the abdicate from power. Powers of the monarch. R ratify minority rights. Uh, 
I'll be honest, I want to do the side so badly, it's not funny. Mm. But half of it's not even done yet, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. Manifest Perfect Storm, or Perfect Sun. We got tons of untold stories. We'll be told in due time. Wait, do, does that mean, like, like, we can do it now, or should we do it later? Can we do it la later, you know? Just in case, we can go down this route just to see what it's like. Because, uh, my God, do I want an empire. A Canadian empire sounds amazing. Pax Britannica, yes, please, but... Your objection's been noted. Oh, maybe it should have been a gentler one. Yorkton trudged through the corridors of the tribunal. His daughter's words ringing in his ear. He approached the room, holding the jury meeting on the fate of the royal couple. Guarding it were two veteran knights. My lord, is there anything the matter? Good question. If he only had to say the word, and the man would suggest to those inside that Queen Catherine cannot be held accountable for the sins of her husband. Regardless, he cannot imagine a future where letting a member of the recently disposed monarchy br breathe would not come back to haunt him. My lord, Yorkton, uh, snapped out of his thoughts. A sort of losing his edge. Yorkton sat back in his throne as the judge and jury re-entered the hall. His cheeks sank into his fist as he pensively leaned into his armrest. After a few moments, an aide emerged from a side door, handing him a slip of paper over to the judge. The man pushed his reading glasses back as he scanned through the document very well. He glanced over the jury, nodding. A man of the tribunes stood up, reading out from a booklet. After careful consideration of the evidence presented, the jury finds guns a second guilty in all counts. Without hesitation, the judge turned to the accused. For your crimes against the realm, I sentence you to death by hanging. The execution will be carried out at dawn. He nodded to the knights, stood on guard, take him away. The knights dragged gun out of the hall, the man hollow visage remaining motionless throughout the entire ordeal. Catherine dropped her knees, quietly sobbing to herself. After a brief moment, the jury representative resumed his statement. As for the former consort, whilst the jury recognizes her complicity in the crimes of her husband, it also recognizes her efforts in stemming the worst excesses of the previous administration. Let's move for a latter sentence. The judge nodded. For you crimes against for your crimes against the Rome, I sentence you to fifteen years in Gaul. Catherine looked over to the man, teary eyed before collapsing to the ground once more. Yorkton glanced over to Eleanor, gratitude washing over her warm, hazelnut eyes. The two exchanged a weak smile. The new king would ensure that the Catherine's prison quarters would be as hospitable as possible. Beyond that, all he could hope for was his clemency to not come back to haunt him. That was the right thing to do, wasn't it? A question of Hudson's Bay Company. Ooh. The judge grunted as he shuffled through the stack of papers scattered across his desk. We will move on to the final agenda item for the day. The presentation, a presentation of the Hudson Bay Company. Oh, right. The Hudson Bay. An interesting case, that one. According to the ancient text, it exists as a fur trading enterprises centuries before the bombs even dropped. Before the Great War, it evolved into a proper commercial empire whose influence spread from coast to coast. No surprise, it retained enough influence to continue operating as a de facto governing authority in the decades leading up to the formation of the kingdom. And even then, the old regime was too cowardly to put it in its place, allowing it to effectively carve out a duchy of its own in the north, until today anyways. Yorkton had no love for the faceless rulers. In the chaotic aftermath of his immediate takeover, he instructed a small squad of knights to discreetly apprehend the company's board and seize its assets. All they had left to do was their name was to small but a speckled man representing them in court, but the company's fate had already been decided. All he could do was report to his superiors that the company would answer directly to the crown, which may lead to some unforeseen advantages down the line. Oh. The enterprise would be sold off to the highest bidder. Uh, let's go answer directly to the crown in a new age for the kingdom. With the army whipped back into the shape and the claimants dealt with, my rule over the kingdom of Manitoba is secured. But that was always going to be a relatively straightforward affair, but now only. Only now, does the kingdom have the tools needed to correct years of mismanagement and incompetence by those at the top, and I'll make sure that people are aware of that. On the offensive, well, I want to go to war. I want war. I want lots of war. Three rivers. Oh, yeah, striking at the center. So, Manitoba on the offensive, probably. Start owning all the states from Manitoba. At the height of its rule, <clears throat> the kingdom of Manitoba is a true jewel of the wasteland, boasting far flung duchies, each fueling its rich and diverse industries. Decades of war and mismanagement have unraveled much of those prosperity, shrinking the realm down to fragments of former size and power. Nevertheless, history has given me a unique opportunity to restore our glorious legacy, and I intend to grab it with both hands. But hey, if you enjoyed our first episode playing as the Kingdom of Manitoba, starting off as the Duchy of Langenburg, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will continue playing and seeing what we can do with our nation. And as a reminder, the update for everybody is on. It comes out on February 28th, 2024. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.